So first, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, Gohid and uh, uh, Alejandro, for uh, organizing this one for wonderful workshop. Very excited about the program. Uh, also, the choice of the timing is very good. We have very interesting events going on this afternoon. I'm really looking forward to that as well. Hopefully, this is, is this planned? No, no. <laughs> okay, okay. All right. So. Um, Today I'm going to talk about uh, some some uh, a collection of my uh, well several of our recent work on um, primal do uh, algorithms for non-convex problems, especially with applications to distributed uh, uh, learning uh, and optimization. So this is joint work with my stu student Davul, um, who's graduating soon this this semester. Um, all right, so uh, today we're going to talk about this very well, hopefully very simple problem. We have obje objective functions minimizing two objective functions, fx plus hx, a one linear constraint, ax equals to b, and uh, x lies in a certain set. Um, okay, anyway. Certain convex set, uh, x, okay? All right, so um, here, uh, fx. Here, fx is a smooth non-convex function. Um, uh, H is also could be non-convex, but the regularizer. Uh, and uh, here, X, uh, capital X is a compact set, and uh, we have uh, the constraints, linear constraint A X equals to B, um, and X together, it's not an empty set. Okay, so this is, the problem has a solution. Um, so this is a, a sort of very general problem setup, and uh, uh, obviously, as many applications that were interested uh, interested in, especially. Uh, in distributed optimization. We'll, we'll talk about a few applications uh, shortly. The plan is to design an efficient decomposition scheme to decouple the variables. So here, the coupling of variables mainly happens in the linear constraint, Ax equals to b, and try to analyze the convergence rate uh, of, the, of the algorithms, and also try to discuss um, some, the convergence related to either first or second order stationary solutions uh, for the problem, uh, and, and then, um, evaluate uh, the practical performance, okay? So uh, I'll, I'll talk about three applications to begin with, uh, just to see how versatile this side of problems could be. First is distributed optimization, obviously, uh, and uh, this is a very classical uh, formulation of distributed optimization where we have a network of n agents. Uh, the objective function of the entire <coughs> network is expressed in uh, the sum of n component functions, each each fi and hi belongs to a single uh, user or agent, and then they are coupled together through this variable y. Okay, so uh, fi and hi are only known to the agent, uh, probably through local measurements, and y is assumed to be scalar just for ease of presentation, but it could be a matrix or a vector as well. The agents are connected by a network defined by a undirected graph uh, with nodes as an agent, links as a communication pattern. So basically what's happening is that each agent can only talk to its neighbors to exchange information. Uh, this is, so in order to, in order to formulate this problem uh, into, into the, the, the very first problem that we see, what we can do is the following. We can introduce several local variables, we call xi's, and assign each user a local variable. All right, so now the objective function become completely decoupled. Each one has its own variable, xi's. However, we will we, we need to enforce that everyone agrees with each other. So the constraints here is Ax equals to zero. So here A is a so-called edge node instance matrix. It, it's, it's a dimension is E times N. E is number of edges, N is number of nodes. So the Ex equals zero enforces that everyone is the same if the network is connected. For example, in this particular network, we have five nodes and six edges. Uh, and the instance matrix look, looks like this. All right, so, um, so if node, uh, one and a two, sorry, the, the pointer doesn't work. So, um, so if node one and a two uh, is connected here, if node one and two are connected, then in this graph, edge one connects node one and a two, so it's a one minus one. And one and a four are connected, so edge four, uh, this node, uh, this edge is called edge four, it, it's connecting one and four, so it's one minus one, so on. So you can verify that when Ax equals zero, one and two are the same, two and the three are the same, and so on, so the entire node. 
So everyone's variable will be the same. So the formulation, the, the benefit of this formulation is that the objective, again, is completely decoupled am among the users. So it is possible to do distributed optimization um, among the users. Now, a uh, second application uh, related to this is, is so-called partial consensus. Um, in, in many applications, actually, strict consensus is not practical, and, and in many cases, is not required, uh, in fact. So, um, for example, in this, in this uh, and also uh, Alejandro uh, has some, some work on this in 2016, also discussed about this issue. So, uh, for example, uh, in this particular application where the sensors are, are estimating the, the temperature across a geogra geographic area, then it is reasonable to assume that the nodes can, can collab with, or collaborate with its neighbors to get some more information about, about the area. However, uh, over the entire network, the variables are not exactly the same. So, are not the same. The, 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 the temperatures are not the same. So, um, which means that the exact consensus may not make sense in certain cases. All right, so, uh, in these cases, we can, we can, we can formulate this in the, into a partial consensus setting where the neighbors, xi and xj, if they're neighbors, we enforce that their variables are similar. Uh, they have a bound constraints on the variables. They are not exactly the same. Uh, and uh, for, this for this particular constraints, you can also introduce a new variable called zij uh, equals xij minus xi minus xj and equivalently <coughs> write the problem into the following linearly constrained problem with one more, one additional variable, z. So here ax minus z equals to zero. This is a linear constraint that we see and z is in the uh, set, uh, bound, uh, bound constraint set, the, 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 the norm, uh, the ball constraint set. Okay. So uh, uh, in, in both of these ca uh, applications, local cost function can be non-convex in, in number of situations. Uh, first of all, um, so many applications, uh, statistical applications in particular, you can use uh, non-convex regulators, SCAD and MCP. Uh, they are uh, of DC type, uh, difference of convex type, which are non-convex. Okay. Um, also, we can use non-convex quadratic functions. Uh, for example, in applications like high dimensional regression problem with missing data uh, or for, um, for sparse PCA problems, uh, for those problems, the objective functions are uh, concave quadratic functions, which are non-convex. Uh, also, in training neural networks or, or machine learning problems where you want to approximate zero, one loss, there are also uh, lots of non-convex uh, objectives as well that we can, we can, we can use. So uh, the third application, uh, briefly, will be on learning. Right, since our workshop is on distributed optimization and learning, I thought that I should cover um, some application here as well. So here is an application on uh, uh, non-convex subspace estimation. So the, ta uh, the task is to estimate the k-dimensional principal subspace of a matrix. So here, uh, sigma is unknown covariance matrix of dimension p. Uh, and uh, the k-dimensional principal subspace is basically the, the, the first k um, the subspace corresponding to the first K principal component. Uh, and uh, the principal subspace estimation is to, to estimate a sample covariance matrix, uh, a, a, a sigma hat, given ID samples Xi to Xn. Okay. So uh, in, in one of the formulations provided by in the original work in NIPS uh, and is, is the following. Uh, this is the problem. Uh, this is the estimate, estimation problem that, that, that the, uh, the, uh, the authors uh, said, that we can minimize um, minus sigma hat uh, in a product with pi, okay, plus a regularizer. This regularizer is non-convex regularizer, either MCP or SCAT. Now the constraint is that the, the, the variables we will try to estimate, estimate the, the estimator, the covariance, is, lies in a phantom set, which means that um, it is uh, bounded from zero to i. This is a uh, semi-definite operator, and the trace equals the k. Okay, so the estimate they provide some very nice estimation results, saying that if I can solve the problem to any stationary solution, okay, any first-order stationary solution, uh, then uh, the solution is good in the following sense: uh, the difference between the solution you get to uh, and the optimal solution pi star is bounded above by this number. Uh, so this number is related to number of samples, which is n here, and also s, s is the subspace sparsity, so the sparsity of the, um, sub, the subspace, principal subspace, and, and things like that, okay? Now what we're interested here is now how to solve, how to find the first order st stationary solution, right? So if the first order stationary solution are good, how to find them? Uh, in fact, the difficulty here is that we, we have this difficult 
non-convex regularizer as well as a phantom set together. Okay, so, we, so we know how to project to the phantom set. We know how to do proximal uh, for, the, uh, for, the, for the MCP or, or SCAT regularizer. However, we don't know how to do both. Um, so the authors uh, in, the, in that paper produce, uh, so produces generated an ADMM-based algorithm uh, to, to solve this, but there's no convergence analysis in any case. So it's a, a, a heuristic result. So what they do is to introduce a new variable x here, okay? So introduce a new variable x here to let it equal to pi. Uh, and use x to take care of the regularizer and use pi to take care of the um, constraint, a, a, pent a phantom constraint, okay? So um, notice that we have this linear constraint here, which, which come back to the formulation, uh, our very first formulation. However, at that time, uh, there's no uh, uh, rigorous algorithm to how to solve this. So it's a heuristic algorithm in, 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 over that paper, okay? So, um, okay, so we have seen three applications so far. So let's talk about how we solve, how we're gonna solve the original linearly constrained problem. Um, the, so in the, within, in the literature, many, many algorithms have been, been developed to, 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 for, for general nonlinear, non-convex problems. For example, the very well-known algorithm is the augmented Lagrangian method, uh, dates back to the 60s. Uh, this is a classical algorithm to solve nonlinear, non-convex constraint problems. Uh, many existing packages and some very interesting recent uh, developments here. Um, uh, however, uh, and also for convex problems plus linear constraints, uh, there are some recent results that characterizes the convert iteration complexity and convergence rates. Um, it, unfortunately, these algorithms require double loop. All right, so there's an inner loop that the primal problem has to be solved to global mean, and then there's an out outer loop to update the due variables. However, in, in, for example, in the setting of a distributed optimization, double loop is not preferable because the agent has to agree with something uh, to, 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 to agree consensus or something before you can update uh, uh, another uh, variable, which is, which is not very convenient. Uh, and also, uh, the augmented Lagrangian method cannot handle non-smooth regularizers. It's very difficult to handle that. Um, recent work to ex extend a, or to, simp to, to specialize AL type method for linearly constrained problems uh, also has the sim same, uh, same drawback, so they have double loops and that there's no global rate analysis. Because of time, I'm not going to go into detail about these two algorithms. So they are combining a, a sequential a quadratic programming with AL. Okay. Um, also, in the literature, we know many algorithms for due decomposition or due-based algorithms, for example, due decomposition or a Wazawa type of method. Um, however, these methods work well for convex problems, but for non-convex problems, the, the due structure is unknown. So it's, it's very difficult to utilize the, the due problem, the, the optimality from the due, due side. So none of these works will work, none of these algorithms will work for non-convex problems. Uh, also, ADMM, uh, alternating direction method of multiplier, is also popular for solving, li uh, to solving linearly constrained problems. Uh, but mostly, it is known also for solving convex problems. For non-convex problems, there are a couple of works uh, recently, um, including Wood House work. Uh, and, uh, and however, they require very special cases. There's a block has to be very, very special um, with identity with identity covariance, uh, identity matrix in front of it. So, um, which is very special, does not apply to our problem P as well. Okay. Um, so the plan for, for for the rest of our talk is the following. First, I'm going to go very, very simple. Okay. Uh, consider the simplest problem we can think of with smooth objective and linear constraint, one linear constraint. So I throw away the constraint, I throw away all the rest of the constraints, I throw away the non-smoothness in objective. So I want to d d discuss algorithms, analysis, uh, and talk about first and second order stationarity. Okay? And then I will generalize, uh, talk about the more general problems with non-smooth objectives and, and also constraints, and talk about the application. Okay? So hopefully by doing this, uh, this is easier to to develop the theory and so on. So, the proposed algorithm, or the algorithm proposed is very, very simple for this simple case. Okay, so it's actually embarrassing simple, it's only two lines. What we do is we do one primal step and one due step. Okay, our algorithm is based on augmented Lagrangian. Uh, so, we first construct the augmented Lagrangian L beta, uh, which is uh, the objective function f 
plus a mu times a x minus b. So mu here is a dual variable for the constraints, for the linear constraint, and plus the quadratic penalization beta over two a x minus b squared. Okay. So beta here is a penalty parameter. So what we're going to do is perform one gradient step of the primal and then one gradient step of the dual. Very very simple. So this is the algorithm. Okay, just two lines. Uh, what we do is first we in, we generate the new iterates, the primal iterates, by minimizing this this function. Okay, so what is this function? This is basically taking a gradient step of the augmented Lagrangian. So this is gradient of f plus a a a a, pro, a, a, a prox term, and then I keep the mu term and the, and the the prox uh, the the penalty term the same as before. Okay, so this is basically essentially taking a gradient step over the primal. Um, so then, what I, and then after, solve the, after solving this problem, I would just go directly to the dual and update one step of the dual, uh, dual variable mu. Okay? So this is approximate dual ascent step. Okay? So this resembles uh, classical Wazawa method um, in, in, many in, many, in many cases. Okay? So the, the only thing that I, I want to mention a little bit is, is, the, is, is the red term. The red term is, a pro is, is the, uh, uh, the, the proximal term. So here, uh, if you notice, here is a B transpose B here in, in, this, in, uh, in the subscript. So this means that the, the norm is defined in the, uh, the matrix B transpose B. So here the B is chosen appropriately to ensure uh, that this, the primal problem is strongly convex and is decomposable across different uh, block variables. Okay? So what do I mean by that? I, I will give you an example on distributed optimization on how to choose this matrix B. So let's consider a network of three users, one, two, three. Okay? One is connected to two, two is connected to three. Uh, so we have this A matrix, this A is the, um, uh, the, the, the adjacency matrix that we just defined, and we can define the so-called signed graph Laplacian, which is L minus, which is A transpose, equal, A transpose A, it's the size of N times N, so in this case, it's three by three. Um, so this L minus matrix is basically, it's a diagonal entry, so it's, a, it's a degree degree of no i, and it's i j c entry is minus one if these two nodes are connected. It's, and then it's a zero if they're not. Okay, so this is a very simple network with one, two, one, and minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Similarly, you can define this so-called signless incidence matrix, I call it B. So it's just taking the absolute value of the A, and then if you do a, B, B transpose, uh, uh, the, this B transpose B will be this matrix. Okay, which is called L plus. The only difference between the two is that the off-diagonals are all positive. Okay, all right. So uh, by doing this, now we can apply this this B transpose B and A transpose by A to our our uh, our primal update. So the constraint here is A x equals to zero. If you still remember for the for the uh, distributed optimization. Okay, A x equals to zero. So here the quadratic term is A x norm square. Right. So this is A a transpose A is L minus, X transpose X, okay? And then this proximal term is X minus X square, uh, B, uh, B transpose B, all right? So we have defined that B transpose B is this L plus. Now we can see that this is L plus, this is a proximal term, okay? Now we can see that the quadratic term here is A, X transpose X, X transpose X, all right? So we can combine them to yield L minus plus L plus, all right? So put them together. And what's, what's left over for this proximal term is a linear term here, okay? And once you combine the quadratic term, you can see that because the only difference between these two matrices are off diagonals, so they are completely off the, the, the uh, different signs. So you, after you sum, sum them up, it's, what's remain will be a diagonal matrix, D, okay? And the rest of the, all the rest of the variables are, are linear, linear in X. Only this term is quadratic, which you potentially can couple the variables, but by choosing these this two matrices, you're completely decoupling the variables. Okay, so now the, the entire problem is to decouple among the agent, the primal problem. Okay, so here D is the so-called degree matrix, and the problem now, by, by choosing this, this B matrix appropriately, the problem is separable over the nodes, and also is strongly convex with respect to each of the variables. Okay, so this is how we, ch how we choose the proximal term. Uh, so ha this has to be problem dependent. All right. So next, let's talk about the analysis step. So um, uh, we will so we will make a, a few assumptions uh, for for the simple for this problem. We'll assume that f is Lipschitz continuous gradient. 
uh, the A and the B's are chosen, the B's are chosen correctly such that the sum of A transpose A plus B transpose B are strictly a positive definite. Uh, and uh, the objective function is lower bounded, okay, which, which also makes sense. And the constraint is feasible. Okay? So um, among the function, among the non-convex functions that satisfy these constraints, these are more, uh, they are symmoid function, octangent, um, hyperbolic tangent, and so on. So these are mainly used for training your, uh, as activation functions for neural nets. Um, so we'll talk about two uh, stationary, two kinds of stationary solutions. One is the first order stationary solution, which is the first line, which basically says that the first order KKT condition has to be satisfied. Um, so this is this is two A, okay, the first line. Now the second line is about the second order necessary condition or second order stationary solution. It says that the, uh, the direction y that you can walk through um, is uh, multiply this, uh, the Hessian of the matrix has to, be positive, uh, has to be positive for any direction, feasible direction that you can walk to. Okay? So this y is a direction so that ax equals y, this is still feasible. Okay? Um, and, uh, this is a positive semi definite. So the second order necessary condition is equivalent to the condition that the Hessian matrix is a positive semi definite in a null space of A, or it's a so called copositive over a null space of A. And uh, when we can also talk about sufficient conditions for strict, uh, local minimizer. The only thing here is that it's a strictly positive, uh, strictly positive other, rather than uh, positive uh, greater or equal to zero. Okay? So uh, we'll talk about so the algorithm. So the question here is whether uh, the uh, whether the 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 the, the pr uh, primal algorithms that we have can reach either the first one, uh, the first order, or second order, or both um, a stationary s a solution. Okay. Um, also related definition here is a so-called strict settle point uh, for a solution pair x star and, uh, and mu star. So a strict settle point is a settle point that satisfies the first order condition but does not satisfy the second order, right? So the first order condition is this. The second order, it doesn't satisfy, it means that there exists a direction, the, the, there exists a direction y that you can walk through so that the, it multiplies the Hessian is strictly less than zero, okay? So th this direction can actually decrease your objective function, although your first order, um, your first order condition is satisfied, the second order is not, all right? So uh, it has strictly negative eigenvalue in the now space of A. Okay, so recently, so while I'm talking about why I want to talk about this, this is because uh, recently the strict settle property has been brought up recently uh, by uh, mostly machine learning property, uh, machine learning communities, uh, mostly for, uh, for matrix factorization problems, tensor factorization problems, and so on. Uh, and a gradient descent type of algorithm has been developed recently uh, for um, unconstrained and smooth setting. All right, so a natural question to ask here is the whether for, for the primal due problems or for the linear, for the linear constraint problems or whether similar properties uh, uh, can also uh, be, uh, be achieved, meaning whether we can design an algorithm that, that avoids the settle points, okay, strict settle points. Uh, obviously in this setting, the strict settle points, the definition of strict settle points is a little bit more difficult uh, compared with the unconstrained case. So for the unconstrained case, you only need to check the Hessian, okay? The, the eigenvalues for the Hessian. So here you have to, to, to look at the direction of the null space and so on. Okay? So the analysis, so I'll, I'll briefly go over the analysis step. The first step is that, um, the first step we'll try to establish, we can try to establish st the relationship between the dual variables and the primal variables. Okay? Um, so the uh, change of, so this, by having this relationship that we can, we can bound the change of the dual variables by the, the change of the primal variables. Now by doing this, by having this uh, equality, uh, what we can do is we can bound the difference, successive difference between the augmented Lagrangian. Okay, only look at the change of augmented Lagrangian, we can have the following bound. So this is neg next iteration, this is a previous iteration. The difference is upper bounded by a negative term and a positive term. Okay? So this negative, negative term is related to the di difference of the iterates, and the positive term is related to the difference of difference of iterates. So this means that if you only look at the augmented Lagrangian, the, the, the objective the, is not decreasing. So it's not a descent algorithm, okay? which makes sense, because you, the due step, which is increasing the objective function. So what we, can, what, we can do, so what we can do is that we need a new object 
that actually is decreasing in order of this. Okay, so this term is the difference of the difference of a terms of squared. Uh, it turns out that the sum of the constraint violation and the proximal term has a desired, uh, desired term. Okay, uh, so the next lemma says that the difference between the next iteration of this, this cons the, the constraint violation xr plus one minus b plus the difference here, the change can be upper bounded by l times the difference square minus this term. So this is actually the, the desired term that we want. Okay, it's a minus here. So the observation here is that the new object, the new object increases in the difference of x squared and it decreases in this, this new term. Okay? So then what we can do is actually combine them together. I'm not going into detail of this. So uh, you can combine the augmented Lagrangian plus this new term to make the entire thing de descend. Okay? Which makes sense. So intuitively, why does it make sense? Because this, you look at the second object that we're combining into the, poten the, the potential function. This is related to violation of the due variable. Okay? So this says that if you sum them up, okay, the, the, change of the overall change will be descending. Okay? So uh, without going into too, uh, too, too much of a detail, we can show that the new object, if you combine these two parts, it will be descending. Uh, and uh, uh, so it, it will be de descending if you choose the, the parameter beta large enough. Okay? So these are the choice of the parameters. Uh, if you choose the, the beta, the penalty parameter large enough, uh, the together, uh, the, the, these will uh, descend. So next, we're able, we'll be able to talk, about, based on this descent property, we'll be able to talk about the, uh, the first order stationary solution. So uh, what we can show is that the algorithm will converge to the sta first order stationary solution. Um, so we we'll, we'll need to define an, uh, an object called Q. This is the gap, so-called stationarity gap. This consists of the primal gap, which is a gradient to the augmented Lagrangian, plus the due gap, which, which is a constraint violation. Uh, we can show that this object goes to zero if and only if a KKD point or first order stationary solution is satisfied. And then our result says that um, the, uh, the uh, feasibility will be satisfied in the limit, and the KKT point will be, will be satisfied, and, and then we have global sublinear convergence rate, meaning the Q function we just define the gap function will go to zero in order of one over t. t is the total number of iteration that we obtain. Okay, so um, so this is the this is basically global convergence uh, result, and you can modify the algorithm a little bit um, so that so so for example the uh, so in order to implement this algorithm in distributed setting, we need to know this 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 parameter beta. We need to be able to choose this based on overall system parameter. Okay, the beta has to be larger than something. But in order to choose this appropriately, we need to know the global information about everything about the problem. However, in a distributed setting, we don't. Um, we, then what we can do is to change the problem a little bit to make this to 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 get rid of this requirement. Okay, so what we can do is we can. Uh, instead, put a, inst instead of put a constant beta there, we put a, a time variant beta, we call beta r plus one. Uh, and um, this beta is decreasing, this beta is increasing sequence. Okay, so this one over beta is decreasing, and, and the sum of one over beta sums to infinity. So uh, by, only ch by using only this beta without any explicit bound, you'll be able to converge as well. Okay, so the, now the step size goes to infinity. Um, so, uh, so the penalty parameter goes to infinity. Okay? Uh, so also we'll be able to argue a little bit more. So what we have just talked about is a first order stationary solution. We can also talk about second order stationary solution. Um, we, cannot, we can show that with probability one, um, the algorithm will not be able, will not stuck at the, uh, at the uh, strict settle. Okay? So uh, under the same assumption uh, as a previous claim, and further, suppose that the, we, we just randomly initialize uh, the x and lambdas. Um, then with probability one, the iterates will converge to a second order stationary solution that sa satisfy our Hessian. Yes? For this case? Uh, depending on how you, how you define a rate, because it's already converged to the first order stationary solution with the same, uh, the, the, the sublinear rate. So 
Um, but so can we say that like how many iterations do we exactly need to convert to the real local minimum? Uh, no. Well, it's, it's first. First of all, it's a different than local minima. Uh, we're talking about second order stationary solution. Local minima, you have to have one more addition, one more assumption that the hashing is uh, rank, rank, full rank. Okay. Uh, here we don't know because uh, I think I think Jason has uh, has an, has a result, recent result saying that even for gradient descent algorithms, you can construct a very very complicated problem uh, problem so that's exponential conversion. Right, so um, I, I haven't tried that. I, I don't think it's possible. Okay, thanks. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to again into the proof. Um, I just want to briefly say that uh, well, the proof is try to characterize the entire iterates by uh, a linear system of dynamic system of equations, uh, and uh, we can show that the hash, the Jacobi matrix satisfies certain properties, uh, which which allow which certain um, uh, stable manifolds. Satisfy certain results in stable manifold theorem, uh, so that we can uh, we can show the uh, that strict saddle points are not stable. Still holding C one instead of C two. C one. Uh, which means continu it finds continuous differentiability because you use yes 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 it has to have Hessian. Okay. C two has to be C two for C one functions. It's a very good question for C one C one functions. So we have to specially design specially understand what do, what do we mean by second order. Problems, okay, and then uh, so this finishes the first part, which is the, the, for the simple problem, we'll be able to characterize the uh, convergence to first and second order stationary solutions. Now uh, we'll talk a little bit more about general problems. Uh, so for general problems, we'll have we'll have uh, we'll have the proximal term, we'll have constraints. Um, so here, uh, if we directly apply the algorithm that just see, uh, it turns out it, it, will, it will diverge. Okay, this is this is adapting a what tells. Uh, uh, example for divergence of ADMM. Actually, this also diverges for the algorithm that we see. I'm not going to go into detail about this uh, example. So uh, the basic, the, what went wrong here is the following. We can no longer use this key property that connects the dual variable to the primal. Because now you have non-smooth term, you have constraints. So when you, the, the, first, the, the, the optimality conditions for the primal will have some, something else. Something else that is related to subgradient. Uh, and, and the partial uh, partial derivatives and things like that. So it's not it's not you cannot exactly write this equation, uh, and all the analysis that we had before does not work. Okay. So the trick here is that we we the the, the, the fix we have here is that we have to perturb the primordial iteration a little bit so that to make it work. So what do I mean by perturbation? So I will perturb the due update by adding this red term. So this red term here is a diminishing term. Okay, so it's a, a constant, so it's a, the parameter gamma times mu r. Mu r is the, the due iterates. So uh, this, the gamma goes to zero. It's a perturbation, it goes to zero. And also we'll, we'll, we'll multiply the same, the one minus the same term, okay, in front of the, uh, uh, the primal as well. So you will see, so this is the algorithm. Okay, so we'll, we'll change the previous algorithm a little bit by, sorry. Uh, by by adding this term, the perturbation and the due, and also by multiplying one minus uh, rho times uh, alpha uh, gamma in the objective. So everything else is the same. So the entire impl implementation of the algorithm is the same, except that I need to perturb this a little bit. So the requirement here is that this constant, so this now, so this constant rho and the beta all goes to infinity. Okay, so it's increasing penalty. The gamma goes to zero, and the product. It's a constant. It's a constant between one and zero, so uh, between zero and one. The dual variable is mu. Uh, the dual. Oh, okay. Yeah, the dual variable is mu. Okay, so this is a typo. Yeah. Okay. So this is a typo. This is a mu, right? This is a mu. Sorry. Right. Yeah. This is a mu. Okay. Okay. So, um, so the 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 so as I said, the uh, the row goes to infinity. Gamma goes to zero, and the product is a constant from zero to one. Okay, so um, so this implies that I, when I perturb the dew, the perturbation goes to zero. Okay, the, this gamma goes to zero. Okay, so uh, with this change, I can still uh, I can still uh, argue for co the convergence for the first order stationary point, but not the second order. Okay, because the the, the problem is very very difficult. Um, you have you have non-smoothness non of constraints. It's not 
quite clear what do we mean by the second order uh, condition anymore. Okay, so um, so let me talk about the applications. Um, so I think I still have a little bit of time. So first, uh, let's talk about direct application to the distributed optimization algorithm, consensus algorithm, uh, a consensus problem that we have seen. Okay, so. Um, in fact, by manipulating the iterates, you can show that for this, by applying to the consensus problem, the iterates can be made very simple. You can get rid of the dual iterates. The primal iterates will just be written down in one line. Okay, so this iterates xr plus one is generated by xr gradient of fxr gradient of fxr minus one, xr and xr minus one. That's it. Okay, there's no, no due variable. Okay, so actually what you can do is to, 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 to subtract two iterates to get rid of the due update. Okay, and then here the W is a matrix of the related to network. Uh, it's L plus or minus L minus. Okay, and then by having this, each agent, so this is a stacked form. Each agent XI will update using this formula. Okay, so it's related to its own gradient uh, own variable and the, the gradient and the variables related to its neighbors. Okay, these are the neighbors. So this is a completely decoupled uh, uh, problem, uh, and the new updates is based on the most most recent two iterates. Okay, so uh, this is very uh, interestingly. This exact formula has been provided by Wartel in fourteen. This is called extra algorithm for convex consensus problem. Okay. So also same, same observation of the relation between the primal due algorithm uh, and uh, the extra has been uh, also being observed by Alejandro, okay? Uh, and uh, however, in this case, uh, we're extending this to non-convex problems and also uh, we show that uh, it converges both the first and second order stationary solution, okay? Um, so as a, as a, a quick, uh, a numer as a quick, uh, Numerical result: We're applying the, the distributed problem, uh, the, the algorithm to this distributed uh, non-negative PCE problems, where we the objective here is a non-convex qu quadratic term plus a uh, L1 re uh, MCP regularizer. We have uh, ball constraints. We have uh, non-negativity constraints. Okay, so we have three sets of agent. One takes care of the one uh, one non-smooth term. Okay. So when we, com we, apply, we compare the algorithm with the DSG distributed subgradient method, which is developed for con uh, convex cases, uh, and uh, our algorithm works much better in terms of the stationarity gap as well as consensus error. So the blue uh, is the proposed algorithm. So obviously, because um, these algorithms are uh, developed for convex cases, okay, uh, and also I apply for a sparse subspace estimation, uh, and uh, the result is also much better because of time. I will not go into detail about those. So in conclusion, uh, in this work, we consider solving the following non-convex problems with linear constraints, okay? So uh, we develop a number of primal dual based algorithms. For smooth problems, we develop the, the, the theory for first and second order stationarity. Uh, and uh, for uh, non-smooth problems, a perturbation-based scheme is used to converge to first order stationary solution. Um, so uh, as a future work, um, Actually, the question arises as what happens for second order stationary solution if your problem is non-smooth? How, how can you say anything about second order solution when you have L1 in objective, for example? So we have some recent interesting result uh, reported, well, we're working on some of the things with Zhang Xi uh, and uh, Zhong Hui. Uh, so we need to use some directional derivative to characterize this, this type of uh, second order uh, problems, okay? So, uh, so these are the main things I want to talk about. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes. Sigma mean here is the second smallest. Oh, second. Yeah, there's the smallest non-zero. Sorry, I haven't. So sigma mean here is the smallest non-zero eigenvalues. So, so for network problems, this sigma mean represent 
the connectivity of the of the network. Okay, so it's not zero. <laughs> No, I didn't. Um, so if we add H, uh, what kind of assumptions on B <coughs> and, and others you know, need to be added? Uh, well, good question. So if I add, so here, so in the first part, there's no smooth, no, no non-smooth term. So if you just want to run the algorithm, the, the assumption of the B is exactly the same. If you add H and then I mean, have the same B, you can still make this distributed. But the theory doesn't work. Uh, and also, if you apply the algorithm to, 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 the, to a slightly modified version of your uh, um, of, of your problem, of, of, of your constructed problem, can show this diversion. So this is the problem that constructed by what? Well, well, I changed this a little bit. So the objective is x squared minus y squared is non-convex, and it requires that x equals to y. So the objective is actually zero at the global optimal, and x is in the set minus one to one, y is minus two to one. So it's the feasible, every feasible point that between minus one and one is optimal. Okay. So if you run this on this non-smooth term, uh, non-smooth problem, it's actually a diversion. So the theory doesn't really work for the first part. But so, so that's the reason that we need to perturb a little bit. I see. In other words, the perturbation works for this kind of non-smoothness, but right. not, not in general. Right. Uh, well, well no, no, without perturbation. Oh, perturbation works for this. For this. For this, yes. Yes. Um, can I ask uh, how that uh, increasing the proximal weights affect the performance of the algorithm? I mean, how do you Unit, uh, with respect to the problem <coughs> of the network so that it doesn't start deformation uh, so here yeah good question so this is this is a very practical question so in general in theory you only require this right this is a traditional sort of a, a stochastic approximation type of a, a step size however in practice obviously you cannot increase it too much you want you want this this row to be you want this this row to be to be increasing as, as, as little as possible as slow as possible. Um, so um, yeah. So but th this is uh, it, it does affect the convergence quite a lot if you start with a very big row. Um, but yeah. So it's a uh, it's a practical. Well, practically, you have to start with small and then try to try to make the sequences not increasing too quickly. But I mean, if the results, I mean, if the rate is not uh, high enough, will it? I mean. The rate is what you do. It should have a sufficiently large rate, right? Rate. rate. You mean the increasing rate? Yeah. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So you, then you may finally you will you will reach that point. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And finally, you have to have to be high enough. That's for sure. So let's uh, thank uh, me one more time. Thank you. Thank you, Alejandro. Thank you, everyone.